reputable. With that, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Dr. Stephen Wolfram. Great. Thanks. Oops. Okay. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to try and talk about some fairly ambitious things here today, uh, both in technology and in science. Um, I'm going to kind of talk about uh, what we can know and what we can compute in biomedicine and uh, how we can make use of that. I'm going to talk uh, both about some practical technology and some basic science that I've been involved in building uh, that tries to address some of these kinds of things. So um, many of you, I hope, uh, will have seen and used Wolfram Alpha, which, uh, at least before all this got started, was uh, kind of entertaining us in the background there. Um, let me start by talking a bit about Wolfram Alpha. Um, you know, when, when computers and I were a lot younger, it used to be sort of a common assumption that, uh, that one day one would just be able to sort of walk up to a computer and ask it just about anything. Um, that if, one, if what one asked was somehow something that could be answered on the basis of any knowledge that had been accumulated in our civilization, then the computer would be able to figure out uh, what, what to say. Well, about 30 years ago, I started wondering what would it would take to, to actually be able to do this. Um, anyway, I, I started wondering a, a long time ago what, what it would actually take to sort of uh, realize this vision of being able to just sort of walk up to a computer and ask it any question that... that that could be answered. So I, at first, I sort of thought the only real possibility for, for doing this would be to sort of build a whole artificial intelligence, sort of a whole brain-like thing that somehow thinks like a human, which seemed really hard. And gradually, I realized that actually that might not be the right direction at all, and that one might not want to build sort of the analog of a bird, rather one might want to build the analog of an airplane, and that computation and a bunch of ideas around it might be the key to doing that. Well, by that point, I'd realized that I'd assembled a pretty big stack of technology and science and also organizational capability. And a little bit more than five years ago, I, I decided it was time to actually try sort of a serious assault on the problem of, of making the world's knowledge computable. Well, the result was, was Wolfram Alpha, which is a, a very long-term project, but it already gets used every day by, by millions of people. Who, who do manage to effectively just sort of uh, uh, walk up to it and have it answer all kinds of things. Okay, so we can give it a, a try live um, here. Uh, so the, the basic idea is you, you type in a question and uh, uh, if it's connected to the network and not dead, it, um, uh, which would be shocking, it will try and give you an answer. Or we could uh, type in some, I don't know, some mathy kind of question and uh, Wolfram Alpha will go off and, and compute the answer, I hope. This is an incredibly slow network connection, which is having me get very scared here. But um, OK, it did come back. Or we could say something like, uh, you know, there we get. To, we'll try and compute um, not only uh, sort of the answer, but also tell us a bunch of things that it thinks we might find interesting, given the question we asked. So you know, we might ask, what's the uh, uh, population of Boston? and uh, although I'm a little scared by the network speed here, um, it's, uh, it's giving us a, a nice result. Or we could say, you know, what is the, uh, uh, the population of Boston divided by NYC? And as humans, we can pretty much understand what that means, and uh, so can it, and that gives us a result. Or we could say um, something like, uh, what's the weather in Boston? Um, and... Uh, uh, it gives us a result. It's always nice if you have a piece of software where you can check whether it's giving you the right answer by looking out of the window. And, um, uh, um, and it's, so it's predicting it's going to get a bit colder over the next day or so. We could ask it, what's the weather been like for the past um, 10 years in Boston? And uh, there we see, see the uh, summer and winter and all those kinds of things. Or we could say, let's imagine we, um, uh, I don't know, we want to say you know, hamburger plus fries or something. Um, we can have it try and compute something about that and try and synthesize a nutrition label and tell us all kinds of details about how much um, of uh, all sorts of strange things are in, are in a, a hamburger and fries. Um, or we could uh, maybe say something like um, uh, life expectancy, male age 35 in Italy or something. 
and now it'll, it'll have to dive into some data and compute some things, you know, what's the probability of living uh, to a certain age and so on. Uh, well, there's the, there's the history of the life expectancy that's kind of a, a shocking, some shocking pieces of frozen history there um, in the life expectancy curve. Or maybe we could type in something a little bit more um, bio, um, bio oriented, let's type in some gene um, and uh, we should know a certain amount of information about that gene. Um, here's some, some basic information, some SNPs and so on. Um, we, could, uh, we could say something like, uh, what's um, uh, 45 kilobases upstream from that gene? Um, we could just type in something like that and uh, we should get an answer if the network responds. See, the real thing is when there's a large audience, if you keep it interested enough, people won't use their their various devices, and so then the <laughs> network will still operate correctly. Um, the, uh, um, or we could uh, go ahead and just sort of type in some, some sequence like this, and, uh, and Wolfram Alpha will probably realize that this is uh, a genome sequence, and, um, uh, and if it responds, it'll, uh, um, it'll show us um, where this occurs on the reference human genome and so on. This is really scary. I'm, okay. If you try it for real, anywhere else, this will come back instantly. <laughs> it's, um, come on, okay. It managed to get the melting temperature for this as an oligonucleotide. That's a good start. But um, I'm, um, I wonder if I just connect to some wireless thing. But, uh, oh, oh, that was. Something happened there. Come on. Okay, it's going to. It's going to. As I'm as I'm yakking, it's going to. It's going to do its thing. Um, oh, disappointing. All right. Well. Okay, you've all got to try this. Not all of the. Well, no, you can all try it at the same time. Our server infrastructure will do just fine with everybody trying it at the same. Everybody here trying it at the same time. Well, so, so Wolfram Alpha knows about uh, uh, lots of kinds of things. Um, and uh, if we kind of look inside at how this all works, there are really four big pieces. Um, the first big piece is it has to get all of the underlying data that it's using. And uh, one might think, well, we can just go forage this data somehow from the web. Um, that, that doesn't work. One has to do a lot of work, actually, sort of going to all the primary sources for every, every different domain. Um, just having the raw data from these primary sources is, uh, is only a very first step. There's sort of a whole curation pipeline that we've developed for taking that data and really making the data computable so that it's not just sort of blobs of raw data, but actually something where, where questions can be answered from, from that data. Well, the, the curation process is, a, is an interesting mixture of, of automation and, and human effort. Um, we've steadily been tuning it. Uh, one thing that I've noticed is that sort of unless one injects real human domain experts into it, one won't get the right answers. So, okay, let's, let's say across uh, thousands of domains we have nice uh, curated data. Well, now we actually have to compute answers from it. And the second, second big piece of Wolfram Alpha is implementing all the methods and models and algorithms for computing things that we've learned from science and from engineering from all sorts of other areas. Well, it's a big job. Inside Wolfram Alpha today, there are about 10 million lines of Mathematica code that uh, are devoted to that job covering a very wide range of areas. Okay, so we have that. We can compute lots of answers. Next issue is how do we get to ask questions? Well, uh, what we want is for humans to just be able to walk up to Wolfram Alpha and immediately ask the questions. So that means that we have to be able to understand their natural language utterances. Of course, people have been trying to get computers to understand natural language for, for many decades. But usually the problem has been, you know, here's a million pages of documents. Now, computer, you know, go understand these. Our problem is different. It's kind of the reverse. We want to take short utterances that people make and figure out what they're trying to tell us to compute. It's turned out that we've been able to make some very nice breakthroughs in that that allow Wolfram Alpha to be remarkably successful at understanding all sorts of weird linguistic things that people feed it. Well, okay, so we can ask Wolfram Alpha questions. We can compute all sorts of answers. Fourth big issue in the system is what do we actually compute and how do we present it? 
So we have to automate sort of computational aesthetics. We have to, all sorts of algorithms and heuristics to decide just what a human is likely to find useful in an answer. But the result is that for all sorts of kinds of questions and more every week, you can in fact just walk up to Wolfram Alpha and so long as the network works perfectly, it'll, it'll give you answers nice and quickly. Um, and of course, every answer that it gives you, it computed. It's, it's not like a, a web search uh, where you're looking up text that people have put out there on the web and give you pointers to those kinds of things. Wolfram Alpha is, is computing specific answers to specific questions you ask it, whether or not those questions have ever been asked before in, in the history of the world, so to speak. So it's not doing something like uh, IBM's Watson project where it's sort of pulling out snippets of text from a corpus. It's actually understanding the questions that it's asked and, and turning them into an internal computable form and using its built-in computable knowledge to, to compute answers to those questions. In, in effect, what we're trying to do is sort of to automate for everyone the process of getting sort of expert level knowledge. So right now, if you want to get an expert level question answered, well, you typically have to actually go and ask a human expert. And the point of Wolfram Alpha is sort of steadily to capture all that expert knowledge, all those methods and algorithms and, and so on, and to automate the process of delivering it wherever it's needed. Well, when you look inside Wolfram Alpha, there are a lot of moving parts. Um, I think Wolfram Alpha might actually be, by, by many measures, um, I'm not sure this is a good thing, but the, the most complex software system that's ever been assembled. And more than anything else, what's, what's made it possible is Mathematica, uh, the algorithmic language and, and system that, that we've been developing for, for, for nearly 25 years now. 